All right, down the home stretch we go on a Monday, staying with the Big 12 North. Uh, John, let's jump over to Colorado. Cody Hawkins, the coach's kid, gets the ball. They've got an outstanding running back there, that, uh, you know, there this year again. Two and six in the Big 12, five and seven overall. A lot of people think they are poised to flip flop that and go seven and five, which would include a win at Ames over Iowa State. Yeah, I think I think seven and five is going to be kind of their their best case scenario. I, I have them going six and six and stumbling to a three and five record in the in the Big 12. You know, they've got games at Texas and at Oklahoma State, and they also have a tough non-conference tilt early on against West Virginia in, in, at West Virginia. So three, three tough games, probably three losses with that team that I see. But, you know, last year the key to their season was their nine season-ending injuries that they had. Um, and you've got a lot of those players, actually all those players, on pace or back already coming into this fall. So their big key is going to be health and, and getting uh, Cody Hawkins on track and staying on track the whole season. has been a bit inconsistent so far as a quarterback for the Buffaloes. All right, Manhattan, Kansas, we go. Obviously, you got him off to a 3-1 and one start, a loss at UCLA. But the prince there, the coach, turned into a frog. He's gone. Bill Snyder, obviously, they're trying to pull a page out of you know Tom Osborne at Nebraska, go back to the halcyon days of uh, Wildcat football. Very tough schedule. Uh, again, the Iowa State game is pivotal at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City early on in October. Pivotal game, toss-up game, I think. Um, I think Schneider's going to have a really hard time coming back with a new staff. He's going to have a new starting quarterback. You've got three games at Texas Tech, at Oklahoma, at Nebraska. That neutral site game against Iowa State is a difficult one. I just don't see how the, how the Wildcats of Kansas State really get past a two, maybe three win season in the Big 12 and probably end up a game or two short of a bowl eligible season at maybe five and seven. All right, Missouri lost a lot. Obviously, they got guys, uh, the receiver gone. Uh, the quarterback was a great college quarterback. Don't think he pans out as a pro. They want to spend a ton of time. Give me 30 seconds on Mizzou. Well, like we talked about earlier in, in, in the segment before, you know, Chase Daniel, Jeremy Macklin, Kaufman, the three cogs to that offense last year, all gone. They're going to need some support from the defensive side of the football to, to stay in some games this year that they didn't get last year. But, you know, they've got a, a relatively easy schedule as far as the Big 12 goes. They're at Oklahoma, at Oklahoma State, no Oklahoma on the schedule. They get Texas at home. So, you know, those kind of three top teams from the south, you know, one of them's off the schedule and, and, and they get the other best team, Texas, at home. So, you know, I think they could shape up for a 5-3 and three type season and maybe s jump up there and get nine wins again just based on the fact that they've got kind of the easiest road to hoe in the Big 12 North. All right, let's tie it up in one big bow, put a knot on it. Who's going to be the Big 12 North Division representative at the Big 12 championship game in December? I think Nebraska's probably going to be there either at a 7-1 and one or 6-2 and two mark. They just seem to me like they are definitely headed in the right direction where everybody else kind of has a lot of unknown variables. Nebraska do, does have the, the departure of Gans, a quarterback, so that'll be the biggest key to address for them in the offseason. But they've got a couple players coming in there that are going to battle for that spot, and uh, Pelini and company look like the favorites to me. All right, there's our four quarters. We'll do a fifth quarter this afternoon. We're going to do some uh, NFL schedules breakdown, courtesy of Jeff Jorgensen. We're working on that Applington-Parkersburg schedule as well. We should have that next day or two, perhaps even this afternoon. Great job out of Andy Erickson, Jeff Jorgensen, the whole crew today. John McDermott, Marty Terrell here on Mad Dog Marty, presented by Capital Orthopedic and Sports Medicine by Toyota Des Moines. Don't forget this Wednesday, it's a Polly Eyes Pizza Wednesday. For the best pie, it's Polly Eyes at Toyota Des Moines, starting at 4. Polly Eyes on Merle Hay Road in Johnston, the original in Grinnell and in Iowa City. Polly eyes. All right, have a good day. We'll catch you this afternoon at 4 on Mouth of the Midwest here at 62andEven.com.